hello everybody, this is AW. Going somewhere, uh, slightly new day with my dog. Still overcast, still been raining. Still rather a uh, set of nice uh, days. Uh, anyways, fresh thing off my mind from a discussion with uh, friends yesterday. <laughs> Chad from the uh, Chad Africa channel uh, made what I think is probably the hottest philosophy take of 2019 uh, and perhaps for years to come uh, where he made a pretty uh, interesting post uh, on Facebook proclaiming that uh, he was maybe going to uh, ponder uh, working on something uh, regarding Jordan Peterson as uh, more as a, of a philosopher than he is uh, what most people think of him, which is a psychologist or a sociologist. Uh, going as far as to say that he's more of a philosopher than most academics who are philosophers uh, by trade are. And uh, of course that's a pretty <laughs> controversial post. And I would like to see what comes out of that. I mean, honestly, I'm not a I'm not a fan of Jordan Peterson, uh, but I also am not a hater. Uh, you know, beyond just knowing that he's a sort of meme uh, and he's uh, just a trending uh, current fashion both to love and to hate on. Uh, beyond that, I have no opinions on Jordan Peterson. I've never watched a video of his. I don't intend to watch a video of his. Somebody gives me a reason to, because uh, I'm not going to waste my time on uh, basically what I consider, you know, intellectually, as somebody who's uh, pretty weak. But anyways, brought up to discussion with my friends, and uh, what you would ex immediately expect, which is what Chad <laughs> uh, brings up, you know, it's, it's immediate. Uh, reaction people have of dismissing Jordan Peterson as a hack, uh, as an idiot, he doesn't know what he's talking about, oh my god, this guy, look at him, he doesn't know definitions, he says cultural Marxism this and that, and he doesn't even know what cultural Marxism is, he doesn't know, he doesn't know anything. Uh, and uh, Chad points out that that's, that's missing the point of the whole Peterson phenomenon, you know, that when this guy is what is... Uh, strongly, arguably, the most popular professor in the entire world uh, at the current moment. I mean, before that, probably the most popular was Sam Harris, but I think Jordan Peterson has reached a level of popularity which dwarfs uh, Sam Harris's following, and before that, Dawkins' following, and before that, you know, whoever else. I mean, Jordan Peterson is a, a rather interesting phenomenon. Uh, and, uh, he says, you know, we ought to be wondering why that is, you know, uh, and uh, simply saying, well, look, most people are stupid and lazy and, you know, they fall for sophism. That's not good enough. You know, that's not good enough. Uh, there's there's something that has to be understood about that. And uh, I don't know very much. I think Chad has a better idea than I do because of what he says. Uh, but I'm not saying I have the same view as Chad in here, in which I think probably my abstract, immediate reflections on it is that the whole Jordan Peterson phenomenon uh, is occurring because there's something true in what Peterson is saying, uh, even if the form in which he's saying it is not, you know, exactly clearly true or even conducive to any investigation of truth. But nonetheless, you know, there's something true there which is drawing people to him uh, you know at a very low down implicit level rather than just simply explicitly though I think there are some explicit considerations uh, you know like his whole attack on like a uh, rampant identity politics uh, you know the hypocrisy of the left uh, you know psychologizing the left here and there uh, you know some of those things are not false 
some of those things are not false. Uh, and, uh, you know, people are just have this visceral reaction of, you know, just, I don't want him to be right about anything. You know, I don't want to say Jordan Peterson is right about this or that. Uh, and there's this bizarre fear. It's understandable, but nonetheless, you know, one has to consider that. That is bizarre. Uh, and that is that... If there's any admittance that Jordan Peterson is right about anything, you know you're you're, you're giving in and you're you're giving it more power. You know, sometimes uh, you indeed don't want to do that. Uh, you know, even though intellectually you'd say, well, why would you not want to do that? Uh, that's purely in, in an abstract intellectual sense. You know, we all know that politics-wise and you know social-wise, uh, there's some people that even if they are right about some things. You don't want to give them a bone, uh, not at all, because you know uh, it, it legitimizes them in a certain way, which can uh, give the perception of legitimacy to other things they say, and uh, you definitely don't want to do that. Uh, but you also don't simply want to push these people to the side and pretend that they they're not there and pretend that. There's nothing serious to be discussed here. To pretend that this isn't a real problem, to pretend that it's you know what most people do with in the academic world, in the intellectual world, uh, which is just to laugh at him and say, "Look, he doesn't know what he's talking about," and all you know, he's, his worries here and there are just all made up, and they're false, and you know this is just uh, reactionary conservatism and blah 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 blah. Um, for the most part, that is true. That is the case, uh, but nonetheless, there is more to that you know an ideology let me let me just say this an ideology does not gain ground merely because it is an ideology an ideology gains ground because there's actually some truth to this ideology there's something true which this is being parasitic on and you need to figure out what that is and you need to address it uh, and so I was having this discussion and <laughs> it was uh, it was fun uh, you know, some people were uh, <laughs> A bit more fiery about it than others, but uh, yeah, you know, uh, there were a couple of videos uh, a while ago that uh, some people said, you know, would you look into the Jordan Peterson thing? Um, and I said no, uh, because I just deem it a waste of my time. You know, Peterson is not somebody who is really an intellectual of high caliber, which I consider worth my time. Uh, and the whole, like, you know, idea of making videos just to go through point by point and you're like, oh, look, he got this wrong, he got that wrong. Now, plenty of people do that, and to me, that's boring. Uh, you know, I realize that, uh, you know, Hegel has a, a, a phrase uh, somewhere in one of his introductions in which he notes that, you know, that the understanding of the youth is one in which they just want to tear everything apart. Uh, you know, they want to come in and analyze everything and go like, oh my god, contradiction, contradiction, you know, false here, false there. Uh, and he says the sign of mature intellect uh, is somebody who can stop themselves from just stopping at that superficial level of analysis. And instead of just merely looking at everything that's false and just going like, oh, this is a contradiction here, he said this one here, and, you know, contradiction and look, he's dodging questions. Uh, what you want to do is look at what's true. You know, what's true in what they're saying? Uh, you know, what kind of truth is being expressed here? Uh, and when you do that, uh, you're actually going to get a much better understanding of what's going on. Uh, you know, why is this person appealing to so many people? You know, why is this appealing uh, at all? Uh, beyond a, a psychologism, you know, you want to understand why is this necessarily appearing, you know, why is this necessarily catching on, why is it that for all the arguments that people put up on the left, uh, and that's both the liberal left and the capital L left, and by the way, I'm on probably the most beautiful road uh, uh, around here, and uh, funny enough, it's called Negro Road. <laughs> This is the road, this is the Negro Road, and uh, 
ponder that for a second. Imagine that that goes with the tune of the Rainbow Road from uh, Mario Kart. Uh, it's, God, it's a beautiful road. Winding like a snake upon the hills. You know, just left and forth, back and forth weaving, uh, you know, on and on. And it's beautiful going up and it's beautiful going down. It's great. It's not, and no racist connotations there, by the way. I mean, it's like, uh, I think because of this area, this area is uh, mostly Hispanic, so the roads uh, tend to be uh, Hispanic, and Negro in Spanish is just Negro, which is just the color black. Uh, I don't know why they would call it uh, the black road. Uh, it's definitely not because of uh, any black populations here. Uh, no idea, but it's, it's a really nice and beautiful road, and uh, I would film it, but... Uh, I can't because <laughs> uh, the motion stabilization on the, this on the camera uh, really screws up with uh, when things are winding uh, a bit too quickly for it. And uh, I'm willing to go slow, but not that slow. Set so the whole thing, you know, some kind of thing. Uh, but anyways, uh, enough about that. So yeah, so you know, the whole analysis of Jordan Peterson, you just go and say, look, you know, he doesn't understand this, he doesn't understand that. That's beaten to death. Uh, plenty of people do that, plenty of people keep doing that day by day. I swear there's probably some industry of anti-Peterson people who just uh, make nothing but videos on this crap and, you know, get hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of views, who knows. Uh, and it's their shtick, uh, but, you know, if... The idea is that, you know, you need to combat Peterson. Um, this approach is not working. This approach is not working whatsoever because Peterson uh, just keeps growing. Uh, his following just keeps growing. And you have to ponder that very seriously. Uh, so, um, main point about uh, what I brought up in that discussion was, you know, I think that if if there is any truth to what Peterson says, and uh, boy, there's some pretty nice stuff around here, but uh, it's all gated and private. Oh well. That if you want to combat Peterson, uh, the only way to do that is not through argument, because, you know, fans and Peterson himself that aren't really in it because of, uh, you know, any rational comprehension or understanding. You know, there's other things going on. Uh, but nonetheless, there is a problem which Peterson is addressing and which, you know, is catching people's eyes. And those problems uh, need to be addressed. And if uh, you want to combat Peterson, that's what you have to do, really, uh, to address those problems. And then the Peterson problem will diffuse itself. Not immediately, but you know, you'll notice that just like Sam Harris disappeared and went away, and uh, you know, his cult is uh, uh, is not as visible as it used to be. Uh, the Peterson cult itself will also f fizzle away. Uh, you know, just just like how religion fizzles away. You know, not through an argument, but through the fact that the conditions for certain thought patterns, for certain uh, mental misunderstandings or understandings. Uh, you know, you undo though the basis of that in reality, and the thought itself just you know fizzles away. It doesn't have its the substance anymore. Uh, you can't have somebody complaining about oppression when there is no oppression. Uh, you know, it's uh, you can't have somebody uh, playing the victim card of you know conservatism if there is no victimization of any conservatism uh, and all that jazz. And, uh, I mean, and, and stuff like that. Uh, like, it has to strike you that, uh, you know, this whole idea of, oh, you know, the conservatives are playing the victim and all these other things. Uh, nonetheless, that's real. You know, if you pretend that that's not real, uh, I don't know what world you live in. You know, literally, like, nowadays, you are persona non grata if you have, like, any conservative views whatsoever uh, in most of anything. Like, you know, you have to shut your mouth on so many things. You're not allowed to talk. Um, 
and for the most part, you know, we all kind of, we all assume because we've all become, you know, post-liberal left and, and, you know, it's just kind of, well, ah, duh. Uh, and we live in our bubbles. Uh, we think, you know, this is the majority position in the United States. Uh, that, you know, just everybody agrees on this, right? Right? But that's not true. A large part of this country is conservative and it is not, it is not a minority. Uh, that is ignorable. This is a minority that is very, very sizable. And if you ignore that, you do it at your own peril. You know, that if you ignore that, the more you keep shutting these people out of academia, uh, the more you keep trying to sweep them under the rug, the more of this mindset, you know, gets reinforced. You know, this... Uh, of them being under siege, uh, of them being censored, you know, of there being some conspiracy to stop, you know, their truth coming out. Uh, maybe, you know, it, certainly we don't think that they have truth, but nonetheless, it is true that they're being censored. It's, it is true that they're being suppressed, and it is true that there is a, a concerted effort to just sweep these people under the rug as if they don't exist. Uh, you know, when Democrats in 2016, the, you know, Hillary called, uh, called everybody else who was against her, or, you know, a sexist or deplorable, the, de the deplorables thing. Don't imagine that that kind of rhetoric was not part of the reason that Hillary lost. You know, I'm not one of these people who's saying, oh, Hillary lost because of racism. No. Uh, I mean, number one reason was the whole economic shit. Not only that, everybody knows that she's a fucking liar. <laughs> Worst candidate ever. Uh, but, you know, when you antagonize people that way, uh, and you're antagonizing a sizable group, do not be surprised when there is a significant backlash and all of a sudden you're caught off guard, like, where do these people come from? You know, where are all these Jordan Peterson and Tr Peterson trolls coming out of all of a sudden? Well, they're not coming out of all of a sudden. They just now have a talking, uh, a face that talks for them. You know, a face that's visible and they're rallying behind it. Uh, you know, these elements have been there this entire time. You just swept them swept them under the rug and pretended that they weren't there. Uh, and uh, as I say, one does that at their own peril. Uh, so anyways, uh, if any of you are watching and you want me to look at anything but Peterson, uh, all I want is give me something, a video maybe to, who knows, uh, I'm not going to read any books, honestly, I don't have the time for that shit. Uh, I hardly have, like, the interest to read through stuff I love, <laughs> you know, and uh, maintain that uh, in constant order, uh, let alone am I going to waste my time reading something that I, I'm probably going to hate. Uh, so, you know, send me uh, in the comments uh, a video that you think encompasses something general about what Jordan Peterson believes. Uh, you know, what are his main, like, you know, what do you think are the main, like, fundamental sticking points that he's talking about? Uh, and I'll watch it, and, uh, if I think there's something to be said about that, I'll say it. Uh, but I won't say it in the sense of, uh, you know, dull, you know, he's just wrong, you know, he doesn't get this, and all these other things. Uh, I'm not interested in that, actually. Uh, plenty of people do that. Uh, I don't think it's worth my time to repeat those things. I don't think it's worth my time to... Uh, consider that I'm going to combat Jordan Peterson and, and his followers uh, by doing the same things which are failing, you know, over and over again. Uh, but I will look at those things and, uh, you know, I'll try to see what, what's true in what Jordan Peterson is talking about. Uh, you know, I, I actually like that... Uh, that approach far more, you know, if I took that approach with other stuff, like, you know, for example, I've been reading the whole shelling thing, which, by the way, I, I know I'm, st I'm procrastinating, I'm putting that video out, I'm sorry for those, those few of you who are excited about that, um, it's good, but, uh, <laughs> uh, it, it's just so annoying with my laptop, uh, but, you know, when I went and read shelling for the first few times, uh, you know, what people do with Jordan Peterson is kind of what I do with Shelley. Uh, in which, you know, I said, like, oh, God, look here, you know, he contradicts himself, and this doesn't make any sense. Uh, he doesn't get what this is. 
Uh, and this, you know, this last time that I've been reading him, uh, I've been looking at it and going, okay, what's true in what he's saying? And when you go by that, you really, you, you, it dawns on you, you know, that these people who are so wrong are not as wrong as you think. Uh, maybe they're not the best ones to phrase the truth very well, but uh, there's something true and significant there. Uh, and I'm not saying Jordan Peterson is going to have anything even close to the, the amount of significant truth that Schelling, you know, gets in it. Uh, but I'm, I'm, you know, not everybody is wrong. Not everybody is completely false. There are truths. Like, you know, even Alex Jones has truths. You have crazy people sometimes speak deep truths. Uh, they may be simple, but, you know, uh, if you study philosophy long enough, you realize that it's the simple things which are probably the, which are generally the deepest and the most difficult uh, and the most insightful. Uh, and that's that's a topic for another video, by the way. Uh, I want I, I need to look over a certain set of things uh, to clarify what I want to say with with that. But uh, there is a sense in which uh, I want to make a video about how people who we think are insane, people who we think are crazy, are not crazy in the ways that we normally think of them crazy. That, cra that insanity is not a loss of reason. Uh, and that in fact, within their own insanity, a lot of these people who we consider insane and crazy uh, are actually very bright. Uh, amazingly bright, surprisingly so. Uh, and they see things that you and I, as normal people, would normally not see. And yet, when you you understand it, you're like, you know what? That's true. That is very interesting. That's true. I mean, to to give you a some hint as to what I'm talking about, uh, three people I want to mention. Uh, two specific ones: uh, Jean Ray from Time Cube. You, if you've never heard of the Time Cube, uh, I don't know where you've been, but uh, boy, that's old, and everybody should know about that. Uh, <laughs> it's a, it's a hell of a website. It's a hell of a theory. Uh, there's a set of videos I was watching about him, and he said there was somebody interviewing him, and he said some things that was like, wow, he has that insight. Yeah, you wouldn't expect that from something like that. You know, that's the kind of insight you expect from a Hegel, a Schelling. You know. Plato, maybe. Uh, but you don't expect it from a crazy guy. Uh, and I don't mean simply uh, that they said something that was a conclusion that these people came up. No, they said something in a logical manner in which it shows that they understand what it means. Uh, and that's a, a really interesting insight. Uh, who else? Who else am I thinking of? Terry from uh, Temple OS is another guy who is uh, crazy and uh, had some interesting moments of clear insight. Uh, and off the top of my head, those are the two people I'm thinking of. And I, I have other people in mind, but uh, they're not coming to mind. <laughs> so I'll leave that. I'll leave with that. You know, uh, I'll, I'll make another video on that, but I'll have to put in some effort and. Uh, I gotta rewatch stuff, and uh, uh, that kind of gets annoying. But anyways, uh, Jordan Peterson, if you give a fuck, let me know. Post something in the comments for me to watch. Uh, me and my friends will take the time to watch it, uh, and we'll see if there's anything worthwhile to be said. See you around.